Eto sata Eoria Eota sotie O kunu soti Orio maso kiatuni Eti onamo soti Kano masato soti ki Yes, Lord. Yes. 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 Help us to keep sin out of our lives. Yes. Yes, Lord. Quick to receive your your correction, your conviction. He said, your praise, you may look and you, th you think, oh my goodness, where are the thousands? But God says, I take delight in the ones and the twos. I delight <laughs> in the hearts of those that irrespective of the circumstances want to praise and want to worship. And he said, and above that is, that is fragrance to my soul. Yes. Much as the sacrifices, he said, you know, the offerings that were made to me, is that they were blessed because, but were they made from the heart? He said, those that come to me and worship me just because of who I am, yes. those are mine, he says. They're precious, precious, precious to me. And you are precious tonight, every one of you. Every one of you. You may look around and say, where are the crowds and gods? They're here. He said, I've sent heaven. <laughs> the place is filled with angels, so you don't see with the eye, but heaven is rejoicing with you this evening. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Oh. I just sense that. that Thank you. Know, Thank you, uh, Lord. It, it yes. Is the, the, the limitations that we think, well, who are we? And God says, you're number one. <laughs> you're number one. You know, when the song, wow. it shows the lion and the fire, I just felt like from inside, like a roar, that God is sending a roar on the earth, and the fire of God will destroy the altars of the enemy, and that nothing that is hidden will not be exposed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yes. 
Yes, Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Anyone else have anything else to share? I just felt an overwhelming presence. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was quite, quite, quite astounding. It was more than just our physical numbers. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, you could, you could feel the heaviness of God. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thomas yeah. says she's not on. Thomas says she's not on. Is it? It is on, though. Tell her just to. Tell her to go out and come back in. Come back in. The old method there. It's on Facebook and YouTube right now at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so. Hello, everybody online. Uh, we're going to do the um, covering prayer. Uh, we won't do the curse break prayer tonight. If you've never done it, you can find it on some of our other YouTubes. Uh, but we have um, all seasoned warriors here tonight. So we'll do the covering prayer. Father, we thank you that you have given us power and authority over serpents and scorpions. Repeat after. We thank you that you have given us and authority over serpents and scorpions against principalities, powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Which is our inheritance over the kingdom of darkness. Father, this authority is not achieved because of what we have done. But solely by what you have accomplished in and through your beloved Son. In whom you were well pleased. That name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. which is above all names in heaven and on earth and below the earth. Now, Father, we declare in Jesus' name that all strong men, powers, ears, joint ears, plans, orders, and assignments are bound. Strongmen, powers, ears, joint ears, plans, orders, and assignments are bound, cut off and destroyed. The strong man's goods are plundered by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We sever all communications from you to your workers of iniquity. Here in this place, we also declare that all spirits will leave quietly without manifestation or disruption. There'll be no backlash or retaliation. We declare in unity where two or three are gathered. that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall never prosper. Satan, the Lord rebuke you as we declare the blood of Jesus Christ is against you. Together we stand on the victory of the sacrifice of the cross. The empty tomb and the resurrection and ascension to heaven of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
for the Father's acceptance of that blood atonement work. And we thank you, Father, for your beloved Son's sacrifice and for the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit, which raised Jesus from the dead, which was sent here to us to comfort, seal us, teach us, and lead and guide us us into all truth. truth. For that and much more, more. we all thank you. you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tonight we're working, we're going to do spirit of fear and ungodly vows. This is a lesson for everybody, but I think that this is going to be a lesson for... uh, quite a few people, because <laughs> I ended up with no glasses. <laughs> I, I, have, I have Greg's glasses on right now. Yeah, it's so funny. Um, <laughs> just, just one of those things. So, okay, let's do a definition. Uh, and at the end of this lesson, there'll be a deliverance prayer that we do together, corporate deliverance. So... And a lot of times for those of you that are tuning in and they've never tuned in with us before, um, the spirits can leave with a yawn, sneeze, tears, uh, any orifice they can leave from. Uh, So don't be alarmed. Uh, That's a good thing. When when they're discovered, um, we do like they do in uh, Alaska. Wellspring, Alaska says, hallelujah. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's do a definition of uh, fear. It actually says, a painful emotion or a passion excited by the expectation of evil or the apprehension of impending danger, anxiety, alarm, or dread, a profound emotion inspired by a deity, the fear of God, right? So here's some synonyms. We do synonyms because a lot of times synonyms uh, may shine a light on a manifestation of the stronghold, which would be fear. So we have um, anxiety, neurosis, Uh, Anxious concern, apprehensiveness, being afraid, care, I like this one, chicken liveredness, chicken hotness, hottedness, cold feet, cold sweat, cowardice, right, it might hold us back from stepping out. In these end times, the church isn't supposed to be super glued in their seats. We're supposed to gird up our loins and gird up the loins of our mind. We're not going to have fear, right? Because we know that he's already won. Um, Disturbance. um, Excessive irritability. That could be a sign of some fear that might be hiding. Faint, Faint heart. So maybe something going on with the heart. Uh, let's see. Hem and haw. Ah, somebody like murmuring and complaining, hemming and hawing. That can have a root in fear. And then we say hara, infirmity. Let's see, excitability and nerves, stomach. Okay. Nervous tension. Pull back. Fear can make us, try to make us pull back. Scare. Second thoughts. You think that could work with double-mindedness? Having second thoughts. Spinelessness. Timidity. Twitching, 
uneasiness, upset, vexation. If we got some, something coming at us, especially at night, can be from a uh, spirit of fear, weakness. Okay, fear prevents us from receiving opportunities from God. It causes us to feel exposed, unprotected, unsafe, and insecure. Fear does not work alone. It usually works along with other principalities and spirits, such as unloving spirit, which we did last week. Fear comes from shame. We fear that our shame or defects will be exposed. Fear and faith both project into the, and determine our future. They both demand to be satisfied. Every act of unforgiveness opens the door to fear. We must forgive ourselves, others, and God. Yes, God, some of us may not want to admit that, but very deeply, we may have areas of our soul in unforgiveness of God. Sometimes as a child, we think that God didn't stop the molestation or the abuse or the early death of a parent or disease. So in a recent testimony at a conference where a woman of God testified that she held an area in her soul against God, she was sexually abused over years as a child. And she would imagine that she saw Jesus hovering above while it was happening. Why did he not come down and stop it? She now realizes this was a lie of the enemy. And she was captive to spirits of perversion running through her family line. And also there'd be a victimization spirit there. And we teach on that as well. So discouragement and disappointment and dread are all forms of fear. Fear is at the root of unbelief, unforgiveness, worry, anxiety, some sicknesses, and some diseases. Fear is a symptom of a wounded heart. Doubt and unbelief keeps us from God's rest. We then try to create rest out of our own labor. So this is a pretty good picture. You can start at the top. You can see how to recognize anxiety in yourself or others. So this would be a good picture to refer to uh, if for your uh, ministry toolbox, right? And, and for ourselves. Up at the top, look at the overthinking, avoidance, sweating, stomach issues, panic attacks, needing reassurance, you know, clingy, needy, 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 lack of patience, procrastination, that can be a form of fear, trouble concentrating. Sometimes we wouldn't connect some of these things, would we? Constant worrying, wringing the hands, trouble breathing, headaches, rapid heartbeat, insomnia, memory issues. These are all things that could be connected to the spirit of fear. So here's a fear-based list that the enemy uses to steal God's word from us and to inject, try to inject fear. It can be persecution. It can be becoming offended, cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, not having enough, never having enough, pressures from outside and within, not protecting our eye gate 
in our ear gate where portable tabernacles are. Eye and ear gate is a major entry point, point for fear, especially if we're listening to the television news, right? Yeah. Okay, as a nurse, I've been in homes where the people are so sick, there's much fear attached with the disease. And most of these people have the fake news blasting on their TVs 24-7, that, that all-day news going, 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 going with the same headlines, just going into the atmosphere. Uh, it's all negative reports coming into their eye and ear, ear gate. And I often think, wouldn't it be something if, if they had worship music going all the time? Instead of that TV news talking about guns, shootings, murders, all negative. So do we think that it's okay to take our tabernacle to a movie with blood and gore or satanic vampires? How about on a date where we intentionally commit fornication or adultery? Psalm 101.3, what's it say? Let's read it together. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Isaiah 33.15, let's read this. He who walks righteously and speaks with sincerity, he who rejects unjust gain and shakes his hands so that they hold no bribe, he who stops his ears from hearing about bloodshed and shuts his eyes from looking upon evil. Deuteronomy 23, 14, let's read this together. Since the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and to defeat your enemies before you, therefore your camp must be holy. And he must not see anything indecent among you, or he will turn away from you. Not a, not a scripture that's often shared, but very important. Um, Numbers 35, 34. Let's read this one. You shall not defile the land in which you live, in the midst of which I dwell. For I, the Lord, am dwelling in the midst of the sons of Israel. And he's in our midst too. Ezekiel 5.11, So as I live, declares the Lord God, Surely, because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestable idols and with all your abominations, therefore, I will also withdraw and my eye will have no pity and I will not spare. Jeremiah 16, 18, I will first doubly repay their iniquity and their sin because they have polluted my land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable idols and with their abominations. Mm -mm. And then Hebrews 4, 1 to 11, this is the scripture regarding rest. Therefore, while the promise of, of entering his rest still holds and is offered today, let us be afraid to distrust it, lest any of you should think he has come too late and has come short of reaching his rest, right? For indeed, we have had the glad tidings, the gospel of God, Proclaim to us just as truly as they, the Israelites of old, did when the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith, with the leaning of the entire personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in his power, his wisdom and goodness, by those who heard it. Neither were they united in faith with the ones like Joshua and Caleb who heard and did believe. For we who have believed, 
adhered to and trusted in and relied on God, do enter that rest in accordance with his declaration that those who did not believe should not enter when he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And this he said also, his works had been completed and prepared and waiting for all who would believe from the foundation of the world. For in a certain place he has said this about the seventh day, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And they forfeited their part in it, for in this passage he said, they shall not enter my rest. Seeing then that the promise remains over from past times for some to enter that rest, and that those who formerly were given the good news about it and the opportunity failed to appropriate it and did not enter because of disobedience. Again, he sets a definite day, a new today, and gives another opportunity of securing that rest, saying through David after so long a time, in the words already quoted, today if you would hear his voice, and when you hear it, do not harden your hearts. This mention of a rest was not a reference to them entering into Canaan. For if Joshua had given them rest, he, God, would not speak afterward about another day. So then, there is still awaiting a full and complete Sabbath rest reserved for the true people of God. For he who has once entered God's rest has ceased from the weariness and pain of human labors just as God rested from those labors peculiarly of his own. So let us therefore be zealous and exert ourselves and strive diligently to enter that rest of God to know and experience for ourselves that no one may fall or perish by the same kind of what? Unbelief and disobedience into which those in the wilderness fell. So when we're in fear, we're partnering with unbelief, right? Fear is the opposite of faith and it's sin. Romans 14, 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Job 3, 25. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Remember earlier it said fear and faith project into the future? Right here, for the thing I greatly feared has come upon me, right? So fear projects into our future. We want the faith. We, know, we already know. We appropriate that. The Lord Jesus Christ already won it for us. Already won. Remember, too, eh, the being health war, uh, gave us the, uh, the admonition that, uh, or the information that the enemy kingdom is just waiting for you to speak something wrong, something negative, and they'll be very pleased to fulfill that that you came out of your own mouth. <laughs> yeah. So we don't want to project that into because uh -uh. the, the enemy kingdom will will try to fulfill it. Two Timothy one seven. Let's read this together. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he's given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. That's, That's big. Yeah, and that would be something you could uh, take that scripture and um, I used to call it when I taught in the jail about our daily meds. 
instead of taking pills, little squares with scripture like this that are just tapered for your circumstances. And cut them up, I put, you put them in a sandwich bag. And wherever you're sitting, if you're in a doctor's office or if you're waiting for something, you can go in and you can just whisper those scriptures and keep them constantly you know, out of your mouth and, and in your inner being. I just briefly jump in, just so excited. I saw, I saw something brand new. That scripture, 2 Timothy 1.7, right near the end, eh? Where he wants to give us personal discipline, right? Like, mm -hmm. like we're, to, we're to cultivate that. Mm. And you know how when you first hear that, you go, oh man, you know, discipline, the D word. <laughs> I used to think, and I still have to work on that, let me tell you. Didn't have a father to kind of, you know, but look at, look at the reward of it. I never knew that if you, if you work in that way and you get a hold of that discipline, you get calmness yeah. and a well-balanced mind and self-control, especially the calmness. And I just thought, well, what, Lord, what's the calmness? Why is that? And he says, well, then you'll be able to find something that you didn't take five hours to find it because you organized it. This, <laughs> <laughs> as a for instance, you know, it is. So that's calmness. That's, when you know where everything is in your life, everything's organized, you know. Yeah, I know. It make it, I knew good, you would Greg. laugh. <laughs> That's good. Okay. It's really good. So it says about power in 2 Timothy 1 7. So here's the strong, Strong's number 1411. What is the power, right? Strength, power, ability, inherent power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature or which a person, a thing, exerts and puts forth virtue. Uh, power for performing miracles, moral power and excellence of soul. So what's our soul? Mind, will, and emotion, right? The power and influence which belongs to riches and wealth. So we get rewarded, right? Because probably by having all these things behind us, these promises, riches and wealth, we gives us more than what, we need abundance so that we can help someone else. Amen. Power and resources arising from numbers and power consisting in or resting upon armies, forces, hosts. What are we? We're in the end times, right? Uh, we must remember the same power that raised Christ from the dead is in us. So what does he say here? Hebrews 10.35, let's read it together. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. Freedom in speaking, unreservedness in speech. Right, the Strong's 39.54, that's what the confidence is, right? And we need that confidence today because you can see exactly what's going on. It's almost like a dress rehearsal for when the Antichrist is going to appear in the mist, okay? And, and the practice, the see, let's see what we can do. Let's, let's see if we can make them do this, do this, close the mouth of the church, not have any confidence to speak out. What does God's word say? That's all that matters. Today, I, I, just, I just felt that there could come a time. Uh, it may not be uh, for the true bride that may get raptured. It may be for the true bride before we get raptured. But I just had the feeling that we have to be ready to give up whatever we need to give up if we have to. We can stand, but... You know what? I just had a visual picture of myself. The only thing that I would probably take with me is my Bible and have to walk out my door. You know? Um, I just felt that at one time or another that people may have to make that choice. So, in the Confidence Strong's 3954, openly, frankly, without concealment, without ambiguity, without the use of figures and comparisons, free and fearless confidence, cheerful courage, boldness and assurance. 
And then here's the reward, Strong's number 591. To deliver, to give away for one's own profit, what is one's own to sell, right? To pay off and discharge what is due. Uh, debt, wages, taxes, right? Things promised under oath, conjugal duty, to render account, to give back, restore, requite, recompense in a good or bad sense. So Spurgeon, uh, not throwing away your confidence, those who are acquainted with the original will know that it's not very easy to explain this word in one English word. That would be the confidence word, right? The nearest approach to it would be boldness. Cast not away your boldness. And it is frequently translated by that word. In the Acts where we read, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, it is the same word in the Greek as that which is here translated confidence. But it means something rather different from boldness because we read of Christ in the Gospel by Mark that he spoke openly and there the word is precisely that which is here used in translated confidence. And the apostle says, we use great plainness of speech. And there the word is the same also. It means that freedom, that peace, that at homeness, which makes a man feel bold and free and confident. We come back again to the word in the text. Your confidence, your childlike plainness, freedom, quietude, peace of heart, rest, sense of security, and therefore courage. The apostle meant a great deal when he said, cast not away therefore your confidence. Hebrews 10, 38 and 39, but the just shall live by faith. My righteous servant shall live by his conviction respecting man's relationship to God and divine things and holy fervor, fervor, born of faith and conjoined with it. And if he draws back and shrinks in fear, my soul has no delight or pleasure in him. Do you see what God feels like about that? Because he hasn't given us a spirit of fear. It's from the enemy. My soul has no delight or pleasure in him, but our way is not that of those who draw back to eternal misery or perdition and are utterly destroyed, but we are of those who believe, who cleave and trust in and rely on God through Jesus Christ the Messiah and by faith preserve the soul. So shrinks in that scripture is the Strong's 5288, uh, to draw back and let down or lower a timid person, to withdraw oneself, to be timid, to cover or shrink of those who from timidity hesitate to avow what they believe, to be unwilling to utter from fear, right? That would be like a fear of man, and to shrink from declaring, to conceal, to assemble and strongs with the faith, 3982. To persuade, to induce one by words to believe, to make friends of, to win one's favor, gain one's goodwill, or to seek to win one, strive to please, uh, to tranquilize, to persuade, induce to persuasion, to be induced to believe, to have faith, to be persuaded of a thing concerning a person. Now here's the faith, to listen, to obey, yield, and comply. So faith also has to do with obedience. To trust and have confidence and to be confident because we know who we are in Christ. Our identity is in the word that he says we are. So Matthew 6, 34. So do not worry or be anxious about tomorrow, 
for tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own. Sufficient for each day is its own trouble. So in the Strong's, what is that worry? To be anxious, troubled with cares, look out for a thing, seek to promote one's interests. We don't have to promote our interests because when we get at God's feet, he promotes us. Right? Caring or providing for. Psalm 37, 1 to 2. Let's, let's read this because this has to do with today, right now, what's going on. Uh, Canada and USA, right? Uh, you know, all the things going on, political and, and other things that they want to take away from us that are really our, our rights, right? So let's read it. Fret not yourself because of evildoers, neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness, that which is not upright or in right standing with God, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb, right? Wow. Yes. Yes, Lord. We declare that over Canada and USA. Amen. Yes. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, right? Now, what is the supplication? The Strong's, it's 1189, to want, lack, to desire, long for, ask, beg. When I see that, I think of the woman that kept going to the unjust judge, and she just kept going and going, right? Um, the thing asked for to pray and make supplications. Strong's 3309. All right, worry. Anxious to be troubled with cares. Look out for a thing. Promote one's interests. Caring or providing for. So Isaiah 35 4. Let's read it together. Say to those with anxious heart, take courage. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. The recompense of God will come, but he will save you. Praise the Lord. In Deuteronomy 20, verse 8, then the officers shall speak further to the people and say, who is the man that's afraid and faint-hearted? Let him depart and return to his house so that he might not make his brother's hearts milk melt like his heart. Well, what does that tell you? Fear is catchy. Yeah. That's what I wrote in my Bible, right? right? Let him depart and return to his house so he might not make his brother's hearts melt like his heart. It's catchy, right? That's what the fake media is That's right. They can get everybody into fear. The fake media wanting to get everybody into fear over everything that they can bring up. He... And keep them there. Yeah, absolutely. So Hebrews 13, 5 to 6, make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. So that may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. 1 Peter 3, 14 and 15. But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you know that this is in our everyday life that we suffer for righteousness. If we really truly want to love God and follow God and do what he says, we're going we're gonna to have people sending some arrows our way. We're gonna, they're going to be doing this, Right? And as time goes on, it'll be more and more as we get into um, the ends of the Bible, Thessalonians and Matthew 24 and Revelation, right? 
uh, as we get closer and closer, which we're right there, um, we will suffer for the sake of righteousness. But guess what? You are blessed. And do not fear their intimidation. And do not be troubled. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, that faith that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. 1 John 4, 18, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love, right? Fear shows up in three ways in our body. We get the fight or flight. It's not meant for long term. When we step out onto the front porch and there's a big old snake out there, we run. That happened to me one day in Florida. This is the proper use of fight or flight. However, our negative thoughts when dealing with challenges can keep us here and start a process that can lead to poor health because it's over and over, it's the overabundance of that cortisol and different things that can just be like jackhammers inside our body that we don't know that it's happening inside. But after a decade or a couple of decades or depending on how you know your uh, body is made, it's going to have an effect if we continue to participate with it, right? The other day, I was uh, working in the yard, and all of a sudden, I looked underneath the picnic table, and on the side, it was a perfect shaped leaf, and it had the little stem. It was shaped just like a mouse. I was like a millisecond from going, but then I looked again, <laughs> and I saw it was a leaf. <laughs> so that would be that quick um, fight or flight. I almost right? had to run like, off. Ah! I almost had to run off the couch there and come to your rescue. Yeah. In the back here. <laughs> I, I'll never forget we we bought that house seven years ago or so, and it, the metal shed that was there from 1965, which we already tore down, but had like the door like that, you know. So I go in, and I was looking for something, and all of a sudden, there was a bunch of little eyes looking at me. And it was dark, right? No light, you know, but I could see the little eyes. I went, ah! They could have heard me over in Harmony, right? No neighbor came to rescue me. Greg was working. I let out a scream. I shut the thing. They, they left. <laughs> they must have said, oh, no. We've been discovered. But that gives you... Their that day. Yeah, but it gives you an example of fight or flight, right? Oh. Then we got resistance. This stage, our bodies are trying to deal with what is confronting us. During this time, we f may feel run down, exhausted. This is where the stress-induced headaches can come from. Or hypertension, which is high blood pressure. Insomnia and other stress-induced diseases can come on, right? They can try to come at us. The resistance stage will continue until the stressful situation returns to normal or is removed, right? Exhaustive. The immune system shuts down. It affects our hair, skin, we can see hair loss or hives, respiratory system, giving us sinus problems, right? Mouth and gums causing mouth ulcers, gingivitis, nervous system, which can lead to Alzheimer's disease, can also affect our muscles. It may be one of the underlying causes of rheumatoid arthritis in our metabolism may be causing chronic fatigue syndrome. The immune system, everything from the common cold to the flu and our cardiovascular system, uh, and increased probability of heart attacks, okay? Because we get the inflammation there. Fear is what is behind issues 
involving the brain, central nervous system, heart rhythm, skin, hair, eyes, and nose. That's not all inclusive, but it gives you kind of a little list. Guilt is what's behind issues with bone marrow, lymph glands, muscular and skeletal systems, and the kidneys. Shame is behind issues with the liver, lungs, intestines, and the endocrine system. Daniel 5.6, then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees were banging against each other. That's from thoughts. Oh my goodness. I mean, you gotta think about that. Wow. So toxic thinking literally wears down the brain and the rest of the body. It causes inflammation and inflammation is listed in Deuteronomy 28, 22 under curses for disobedience. Right? Inflammation has been, been a big AOL keyword now for probably a decade. I can remember them talking about a uh, derivative of pineapple, bromine, to help you know, get rid of inflammation. We can take all the vitamins and we can eat all the great foods that we want. But eventually, if there's a spiritual root there of fear, it will start to affect our body, right? Yeah, Greg says, plus you're trying to bypass, you know, you know being, being in partner with a spirit of fear, right? Anxiety and stress. So science is showing, Gen Genesis 4, 7, if you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door, and it's desires for you, but you must master it. The enemy of our soul looks for open door or legal ground. So here we have a picture of a child, and you can see, you know, a lot of this has happened. Um, you know, the adult with the hand around the throat, your words have power, right? We've got to use them wisely. But look, it says fool. Uh, it, it just uh, worthless all these things that can be spoken uh, over us, even as children, and it may not be from an adult. It could be from another person, another child at school, Bullying. right? Bullying. Bullying, right? Or even our own siblings, or sometimes even our own children, right, can actually be speaking words. But what do we got to do? We got to have that confidence. We got to have the boldness. And we do not have fear, right? No matter who it is. Fear will try to move in with traumas, dysfunction. And a trauma can come in with just seeing a car accident or looking at the hello vision and not watching something that's very good. Dysfunction. How about some dysfunctional families? running around in constant self-pity and drama, you know, rejection, abandonment, bitterness, accusing spirits, negative thinking. Even the trauma in the picture above can be healed by forgiveness and renewing the mind with God's word. Just jumping in there, all those dysfunctional families. Remember, they used to make TV shows out of them all the time. <laughs> Archie Bunker and all kinds of ones. Yes. And, and we kind of thought that was almost cool or something. Yeah. But we sh sure don't want to, in reality, be living like that. What do we have now? Isn't it like Dr. Phil and some of the other ones there? Uh, those ones there that show so much dysfunction? It's, it's sad, really. What is needed is to learn, you know, to overcome and deliverance and and things like that. And of course, not everybody has uh, the chance to be able to go through classes like this. Many people don't know they're a victim of their generations. Nope. So they don't know why they behave that way. That's absolutely so true. Because mm. we can inherit stuff in our DNA, right? 
So loneliness, no vision to follow. Loneliness has been called the world's most common mental health problem, one of the most universal sources of human suffering, and an almost permanent condition for millions of people, regardless of race, class, and sex, right? The enemy wants to use loneliness. It's an inner emptiness that may flee after a few minutes or try to persist, persist for a lifetime. We've got to learn to overcome it. Mm. And you know what? Um, it makes me, I'm seeing the word codependence. Loneliness can cause us to be codependent. And we can't do that. We've got to depend. Our dependence is on the word of God, right? What he says we are. It even and flashed at me, eh? Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't tell you. It flashed at me today. The, the, a, f a thought came flashing in, especially with all the troubles that are going on politically right now. Uh, suddenly, I just had a thought flash. I knew it was from the enemy, but I had to kick it out fast, like an umpire, like you say. But the fact that the, the thought flashed in and tried to make me think, gee, uh, what's, it was a deep thought. It tried to make me get into immediate despair, like, like why are all these, why are we, what are we all doing here as humans? And why is everything in such a mess right now? And as if to make you think that, that um, you know, that you didn't even want to be a part of all this at this time kind of thing. It wouldn't, wouldn't it be the enemy, though, eh, to really try to slam that at you, eh? No, because we're supposed to be grateful. Well, every I knew what day, to do next. I knew right? what to do, but that yeah. he dared even to try. And I think I'm a fairly seasoned. That's you know, because Christian. of the television. Yeah. With all the stuff about the elections and all that stuff going on. Yeah. So, and then you think about that uh, Dominion software, and it's been used all over the world, and and we it's been used I think in so many states in the USA, but it's also been used in Canada. So use use your imagination. I won't say anything. <laughs> to think, but, to you think know. you can't even trust voting for any for many countries. Maybe we've all been duped in a number of <laughs> cases. Eh? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So loneliness is the painful awareness that one lacks close and meaningful contact with others. Well, what stops that meaningful contact? We taught a few weeks ago on rejection. And what's rejection do? Have us pull in like a turtle, huh? in the little shell, build up a little wall, right? It involves a feeling of inner emptiness, isolation, and intense longing. Even when they are surrounded by others, lonely people feel left out unwanted, rejected, or misunderstood. Frequently, there are feelings of sadness and discouragement, restlessness and anxiety accompanied by a longing to be wanted and needed by at least one other human being. But we can't rush into that. We have to have a solid foundation before we try to go and rush into another, need a human being more than we need God's word or God, right? We want to be on a good, strong foundation. Loneliness can result in low self-esteem, depression. There's the addictions. Ex exhibitionist behavior. What just happened to the guy? He was a, a writer for almost 30 years, and it was on the TV because he was on a Zoom and I guess he didn't have all his clothes on. And they fired him. That just came out this week. The exhibitionist behavior. Uh, and also, that can be attached when there is a por pornographic addiction. It, it'll start to uh, escalate. escalate. Yeah, they, these spirits don't want to just pull up a recliner and stay there, be quiet. They want to expand their territory, right? So it can go to exhibitionist behavior. It can go to um, uh, that, the, with, you know, beating and whipping and animals, all kinds of pedophilia. This is just terrible. They keep but raising it, the bar, right, to see how much they think they can keep getting away with mm -hmm. before they're caught. 
It's an exhibitionist behavior. So see, it can be attached with loneliness and physical problems as heart disease or high blood pressure. So is that the basis, the guilt? Is that the basis of much human suffering? There are two broad categories. We've got objective guilt. Occurs when a law has been broken and the lawbreaker is guilty even though he may not feel guilty. Um, subjective guilt refers to the inner feelings of remorse and shame, self-condemnation. Right? That all comes from the enemy because God convicts us in its gentle conviction. This is garbage from the enemy that come because of actions, right? It could be something that a person did or through something that's felt as wrong or one failed to do something that should have been done, right? The rope in the boot comes out. We need to forgive ourselves. And with subjective guilt, there's often discouragement, anxiety, fear of punishment, low self-esteem, and a sense of isolation all tied together as part of the guilt feeling. Studies have shown that the physiological effects of self-blame accumulate over the years. If you blame yourself for a long enough period, the body can begin to deteriorate. Guilt feelings may also arise anxiety, self-condemning feelings, inferiority, inadequacy, weakness, low self-esteem, pessimism, insecurity, and moral pain. Sometimes it results in self-punishment, right? We've got some people, young ones, too, cutting. Guilt and loneliness info is uh, from Dr. Franz Kranji website. You can just find him. Uh, you find on his website, you can even get some of his uh, YouTubes, along with even Dr. Sternum, Michelle Sternum. Uh, they've uh, both... Uh, going through the being health and they use it in their practice. So how do we defeat fear? When we forgive ourselves, others, or God, many have blamed God for things that have come from the enemy. It takes away anger, hatred, resentment, and bitterness. And when we repent and renounce for our participation, with maybe shame, guilt, regret, sorrows, things in our generations. It can take away shame, guilt, regret, and sorrows, right? So bitterness steals your joy. Unforgiveness robs your peace. And fear will not let you give or receive love. So let's read this together, Romans 12, 1 to 2. One to two, uh, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship do not be conformed to this world this age fashioned after and adapted to his external superficial customs but be transformed changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. So in the Strong's, number 341 and 342, renewing for renewing the mind, what is it? It's to cause to grow up. We start out when we're first born again on milk, but what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to go on meat. Right? We're supposed to grow up, mature. New strength and vigor is given to one uh, to be changed into a new kind of life as opposed to the former corrupt state. Renewal, ah, a renovation. Complete change for the better. 2 Corinthians 5, I do quote that a lot, but 
We are becoming new. And then prove, number 1381, we're to prove, to test, examine, prove, scrutinize, to see whether a thing is genuine or not. They used to test the, the, um, the coins to prove them, to see if they were okay or if there was, they used to weigh it to see if they shaved off a little bit off the coin to recognize as genuine after examination to approve and deem worthy. We're all going to meet him at the beam of seat judgment, right? And the word of God is going to judge us. How much word do we have in us? I mean, if we're going to be judged by it, how much do we have in us? Right? Yes. No excuse. Greg remembers when he was in the military for the summer in Canada or Ottawa, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when the sergeant said something, yeah. you didn't say, well, I wanted to sleep in this morning. You said, no excuse, sir. That's right? right? <laughs> and then you reminded me, is it Hebrews? Where it says you will ha you, you're without excuse. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. God himself uses that same no excuse business. Ooh. I'm telling you. <laughs> and here's the Strong's 1381. Proof. Well, we grow up. I'm just, what's coming to me is, um, you know, when we're 22 years old, we're not learning to walk anymore, like a little 15-month-old. We're expected to grow, right? We're, supposed to, we're expected to grow up. God wants us. And he's written so many beautiful things. In every single one of our books, he's written. He wants us to accomplish it, and he doesn't want the enemy to hinder us with strongholds, right? So this is what it's all about, is learning to overcome. So here's the proof. Oh, I did that. Romans 12:19. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God's wrath. For it's written, vengeance is mine. I will repay and requite, says the Lord. So our creator knows our thoughts and heart intentions. If you go into the Amplified Psalm 119, it's pretty plain that he knows our thoughts, words, deeds, motives, and intentions. That word avenge just came to me. You know, you, you hear the word vigilante? Mm -hmm. That's where somebody's taken the law into their own hands, eh, to avenge. Mm -hmm. So let God be the vigilante, I suppose, right? Since he's the ultimate law. <laughs> right. So, so the word avenge and vigilante must be a similar Latin root, eh? Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. It would mean that because people don't agree with you, you don't burn down their buildings. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, you know, it's against the word of God. And so they, there will be a consequence. Matthew 9, 2 to 4. And they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Take courage, son, your sins are forgiven. And some of the scribes said to themselves, This fellow blasphemes. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why are you thinking evil in your hearts? There's nothing hidden, right? Proverbs 16, 2. All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. Just recently, one of the prophets concerning all the uh, stuff going on in the USA saw a scale, which is the scale of justice, right? Proverbs 24, 12. If you say... See, we did not know this. Does he not consider it who weighs the hearts? And does he not know it who keeps your soul? And will he not render to man according to his work? Right? So here, in just four days of thinking correctly, 
you can remove the thorns from those toxic thorn trees. See on the left that big black round area? That's, that's toxic thought in the brain. And you can create new healthy memories over that black spot within 21 days. And you can do that with the correct thoughts and speaking and reading God's word. That's how, e that's how, that is so easy. Yep, doers of the word are justified. So you can detoxify your brain and change its whole neurochemical structure through your thought life. With every thought and every action, we're, it's like a light switch. We're affecting our DNA. For example, if you decide to reject those thoughts of unforgiveness, hatred, bitterness, anger, through genuine repentance, releasing, and forgiveness, you can change that memory and the structure of the thorn trees. It's been scientifically proven that if you choose to reject those toxic thoughts and purposely meditate on good thoughts, such as the word of God, the chemicals released from those good thoughts will flow through the thorn trees and literally remove the thorns. When you repent for your bitterness and forgive, the chemicals released from those thoughts will literally cut out all the thorns in that black spot. And those thorns drip, uh, kind of like a, what you would call a cortisol chemical that can do damage when it's in overabundance, right? So, and then we got these little glial cells that when we're sleeping, they're like little uh, vacuums, cleaning up everything in our brain. God made us such a perfect, we're, we're just walking masterful computers. God just made us. So let's, let's do a corporate deliverance prayer and kick out any fear or anxiety or stress, right? Either in ourselves or maybe even in our family line because it is catchy, it travels. So repeat after me, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. In, the in the name of Jesus Christ, I choose to confess, repent, renounce, confess, repent, renounce. and forsake participation with fear. I ask for forgiveness and renounce all curses Associated with the spirits assigned to me, and that the curse be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I recognize and take responsibility in the generations of my family. On both sides, going back. To Adam, and Eve, both sides to Adam and Eve for our participation with all spirits of fear. I release myself from any guilt, from guilt shame, shame, condemnation, condemnation and any curses due to fear. Lord Jesus, I shatter, cut off, and dissolve the power of the spirits of, the power of, the spirits of fear. Fear. fear, fear of falling, fear of, falling. Fear of heights, fear of, heights. Fear, of fear of punishment, fear of criticism, fear of, fear of insanity. Fear of, evil. fear of evil, dumb and deaf spirits, and deaf spirits. Torment. torment, fawning fear, fear. craven fear. fear, cringing fear, fear. frightened, made, made fearful, dread hearted, hearted. Trembling. trembling, 
fearful of heart. Hasty heart. Unbelief. No faith. Timidity. Faithlessness. Being afraid. Frightening thing. Terrific portent. Fearful sight. Terror. Terrible. Exceeding fear. Formidable fear. To be put in fear. Alarm. Uncourageous. Unholy dread. Dismay, Dismay. funk, Funk. scariness, Scariness. fright, Fright. fear and trembling, trembling. nervousness, Nervousness. apprehend, Apprehend. shock, Shock. weakling, Weakling. lost courage, courage. heartless, Heartless. phobias, Phobias. panic fear, fear. doubt, Any fear stricken, trauma, any fear that causes heart attacks, any fear that causes high blood pressure, any fear that paralyzes, any fear that causes fainting, to cause to make fearful. Spirit of the coward. Spirit of slavery to fear. Fear of loss of spouse. Fear of losing children. Fear of the future. Fear of tomorrow. Fear of poverty. Fear of betrayal. Suspicion, Suspicion. Distrust. distrust, any fear of drowning, fear of drowning. Any, fear of any fear of abandonment, any fear of failure, fear of, failure. Fear, of flying. fear of flying, fear of change, fear of, change. Fear of, man. Fear of man, inferiority, inferiority. Shyness. shyness, fear of intimacy, Fear of commitment. Fear of success. Fear of accidents. Fear of aging. Any fear of parents. Any fear of spouse. Any fear of death. Fear of dying alone. Slumbering spirits. Doubt and unbelief. Spirit of deception. Believing lies. Any unforgiveness. And not discerning the body. In my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cancel all of Satan's power and authority over me because of fear. In Jesus' mighty name, I cast you out and command you to go quietly now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command all tormentors and principalities of bitterness, self-bitterness, jealousy and envy, rejection, fear, doubt and unbelief, occult, and any other spirits that have been assigned to me because of fear to leave me now without causing any damage and go to the dry place. Thank you, Father. 
for the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for healing my heart, my soul, mind, will, and emotions, and body. Please refill me, cleanse me, and please reveal your loving words of truth to me. See if the Father is saying anything to you by his Holy Spirit. Anybody hear anything or see anything? Doesn't always happen, but sometimes you might get a word or you might get encouragement. Oh, really? Okay. Where were you five years ago? Oh, where was it? You know what? Actually, we've been doing ministry for five and a half years, but I wasn't here. At fellowship, I started out at St. Stephen's, and I was there about a year, year and a half. Yeah, God was testing me. Sometimes I was talking to empty chairs. <laughs> but, you know, um, yep, but he's been good to us, and, and my goodness, the camera, you know, the YouTube, so we'll be able to help people, not only just here in Durham, but, you know, worldwide, they watch on YouTube and, and on uh Facebook and Greg just found a way to get us on LinkedIn and all kinds of other little things. Twitter. So praise the Lord, you know. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Oh. All our Florida, all our Florida friends. Okay, so. Um, this time now, only the minister says, and the reason why we do this is because some of them are, are squatters, and some of them need to be cast out, right? So we just follow up with this on the prayer. These saints have repented, renounced, and asked forgiveness for fear in their generations and even in themselves. Now I command all spirits involved with fear, come up and out, and go to the dry place along with any underlings, overlings, and gatekeepers. Come up and out and go to the dry place by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take a deep breath. Now we just give God glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I just want to do something quick with ungodly vows. It's good to cancel because these ungodly vows can pop up with fear, okay? So, for as he thinks within himself, so he is, Proverbs 23, 7. At any time, we may have said statements or vows that are waiting to be fulfilled. Satan and his underlings would like to see them come to pass. Many of these vows may have been said as children or in times of heavy duress. Even if said as a child, they will affect our lives as adults. If we've made any vows like these below or remember any other vows like them later on, you know, if the Holy Spirit brings to your remembrance, we go before the Lord and we repent and break the power of any curses that would have come from our words. So now some of these you may not have said. Someone in your generations may have said, but you may not have said. But we gather these up from people that have come to the meetings and shared. So let's just do this. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and as an act of my free will, I confess Repent and renounce 
any time that a vow was made, a vow of, whether it be in myself or my generations, I don't fit in. I'm not good enough. What's the use in trying? It's too complicated. I'm an outcast. I am the black sheep. I'm the scapegoat of the family. I'll just suck it up and go on. I'll just pretend it doesn't hurt and go on. Nobody will believe me. No one will listen to me. It's my fault. I am worthless. I'd better be perfect. I never get what I want. I'm defective. Children are seen and not heard. Be strong and perfect. Make us proud. This is the way it's always been. I've always done it this way. I can't change. I'm not going to change. You always hurt the one you love. I'm not going to be like my mother or father. Keep peace at any price. Family secrets stay in the home. It is just not for me. I have no control over it. I can't. What's wrong with me? I'm just a doormat. No one's going to hurt me again. I'll never trust another. I also renounce and cancel any ungodly vows that I made that I do not remember. Men don't cry. Bad blood. You made your bed, now lie in it. Men have to be tough. Our family never says I love you. Time heals all wounds. I'm making the best of what I got. I'm an underachiever in the family. I will stuff this down inside. It doesn't matter. In my life and in my generations, going back to Adam and Eve, I ask you, Lord, to forgive me and all my family members and all my past and future generations for involvement, for involvement in these vows. I release myself from the curse of these vows. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the power of his blood, I cancel all of Satan's authority and power over me because of these vows. Father God, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Please heal my heart and cleanse me and refill me from the effects of any ungodly vow in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please speak your loving words of truth to me. See if anything, if you hear anything or see anything. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel lighter. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance maybe a vow. Especially if we ever wished ourselves dead and there's a uh, curse of death in the family line, we would always say, I, I repent forever wishing myself dead, renounce it, 
cancel any death spirit, and then we would say, I shall live and not die to proclaim the word of the Lord. And we cancel that, right? Does anybody have anything to share before we close? We can, we've got the mic there if you have anything that you want to share, anything about tonight or anything that's going on. You're not on camera. It's just the audio over there. It's good because there's a lot of people listening online right now. Anything God's specially done for you, you know, any encouraging Builds thoughts. the faith. Builds up everybody's faith, yeah. Sure, go ahead, yeah. It's good. Praise the Lord. I already mentioned uh, tonight, uh, I had a blessed most of you for, for the ministry that you have. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so grateful to be here and to hear the thoughts that have been running through my mind for the last 45 years. Yeah. You know, so uh, yeah, yeah. awful, awful, free, free to be here. And I'm so thankful. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anybody that's uh, online, if you have uh, something to share, Greg would be able to see it. Type it in. Yeah. Or you have any questions, uh, either on YouTube, Facebook, or... I can mention to, to us here that, that I already received some comments. Um, Kellyanne Conway of Florida said, blessings, can't wait to learn this and walk through this teaching. She says, I'm on the verge of a breakthrough here, guys. Praise, Praise the Lord. Woo-hoo. Praise God. Hallelujah, she said. Hallelujah. And Carol, Carol Shannon weighed in, uh, saying the scripture is so clear to the hearer. Powerful. Praise that was, the Lord. That was, that was encouraging. Uh, Gilma just uh, typed in, praise the Lord. So Gilma's watching from home. Um, we also have Alex watching. He said he felt a word from the Holy Spirit. Uh, though you may not see it, your words through the Holy Spirit are heard in the darkest places. Oh, your words are not on deaf ears, and faith is through hearing. Yes. Yeah, so that, that was encouraging too. And I'm just searching to see if anybody else... Uh, and as um, Greg's looking, mm -hmm. remember, we practice the eight R's. We recognize. Yes. Right? So now, if we've had fear, I mean, that's something I had to deal with. And, and it still tries to come back. I, I look at what's going on now in the U.S. and, and, and ask Greg, because sometimes I get, like, really, and I say, they're lying. They're, they're doing, you know, I can see what it is. I have discernment. Yes. And I look at him and I say, I want to punch him. <laughs> I'm just, it's just so frustrating. Um, yeah. So I have to take authority over that. That's right. I have to take authority over it. So you recognize it. You take responsibility. You repent if you've let it back yeah. in and you've walked in it again. Renounce it. Renounce works up, uh, rips up the uh, right of the enemy. You remove it because you say, fear, I don't want nothing to do with you. Get out, right? Yeah. Ask God to cleanse, heal, and refill you, yeah. right? I get and, a little bit worked up with that, too. Um, yeah. Not quite as much as you, um, but I try to, we all approach it a bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, I totally believe what all the prophets said. He's going to get the second term, and, and America's going to get cleaned up. A lot of the swamp will be drained. Um, and I'm just watching sometimes the TV now just to see how God's strategy keeps exposing the evil. There was just a report somebody sent a minute ago that a judge in Pennsylvania now has ruled um, that any votes counted after the um, st close of the election at 8 p.m. on Tuesday are now not valid. Mm. So that's a huge uh, win for Trump and his team. So it's just fascinating to see how God is strategizing in, in just a perfect way that Trump will have a second term, like God said he would, and then and the and all the evil, right, and the corruption is still going to be exposed. So, okay. in the, but in the meantime, it is tempting sometimes to want to punch somebody's face <laughs> on the TV set <laughs> who's spouting lies, you know. <laughs> yeah. But resist, <laughs> and then when we resist, we rejoice because we're free. 
we recognize like, wow, and then guess what? Go and tell someone else. Let them come. You know, the price is right. The meetings are free. You know what I mean? If they've been free for five and a half years, and if we have our way, they'll always be free. And plus they're on YouTube, right? So it's so important for people. That's, that's our heart. Yes? Uh, I consider that I'm fortunate to have met both Greg and Gail. I want to compliment them on their perseverance, their persistence, and their faithfulness. I want to compliment them on the depth of their teaching. This is not light stuff. The time they spend in systematically examining this word, that word, helps the Holy Spirit search our hearts. And I believe that we are blessed by the privilege of having them lead these meetings. I personally say blessings on you both. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to search my heart week after week to examine my thoughts, my motives, my goals, my ambitions. We are a blessed generation because of you. And my prayer is that multitudes will get to hear, experience, and enjoy the deliverance and freedom that comes from the work and ministry of them both. Amen. 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 Touch and agree. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're we're just passing on what God showed us, say, from other ministries, too, that taught with that same level of depth. So we just we just couldn't help but want to pass it on. What's and God the, bl- yeah. Step number eight, restore someone else. Oh, yeah. Now that you've been restored, freely received, eh? freely give. God loves that. Yeah. Thank you so much for your kind words, um, and thank you for offering your ch- this church yes. as yes. a place where we can do this, because... It's hard to find places that want to engage in this level of deep, uh, strong teaching, you know? Yeah, sure. It's, it's a historic fact that when truth is taught, it will be attacked. Yeah. <laughs> when people are being set free, it will be stopped. The enemy does not enjoy our freedom. But despite the misunderstanding or the lack of people making the time to search the innermost parts of their hearts, I think is to their regret in the long term. I love the fact that this doesn't let anyone off the hook. There's no exhibitionism. There's no emotionalism. There's a systematic study of exposing who we are and the things that have led us to where we are and the opportunity to be free. Amen and amen. Amen. Beautiful. Look, if those that are not here with us, it would be wonderful to have you, but we will be with you one day anyway. Anyway, bless you all. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Can you close in prayer, Greg? Yes, <clears throat> yes, thank you. Thank you, Father God, in, uh, in Jesus' name we come to you and we're uh, so indeed pleased to share these wonderful things that you have shared with us that we did freely receive and we can freely give because you're such a good God and you've given to us to overflowing. Thank you so much for the, uh, uh, the, the physical facilities that were granted to us that we yes. could do this to share p- with people and the and the abundance that you kept bringing to the ministry so we could uh, use electronic equipment to get the message out to, the, to anyone on the internet. Thank you so much, Father God, for that. You're such a good, good Father. Thank you for showing us these deep truths because it did, you did say in your word that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. 
<clears throat> so thank you that we're getting that knowledge so we will not perish and we will walk in, in it as overcomers right to the end. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The first full day after rapture, that's allowed, the party's at my house. <laughs> There's going to be a big party, I tell everybody that. So we say, we're signing off and we say good night to everybody around the world. A lot of times Trinidad, Jamaica, England, uh, Florida, Canada, and we just bless you.